Comics are as advertised. The process of making a comic is a pricey one. You gotta pay the writer, the pencil, the inker, the editor, the distributor. The printer. Point is, unless you're filthy rich, you're gonna need to find another way to fund your comic. And implying you don't have those other means of getting guap, you're gonna have to rely on ads. But ads aren't just a vehicle for pushing product. In fact, good comics advertising is an art form. To really understand the evolution of comics advertising, we gotta go back to the beginning. Single issue comics, being a type of magazine, had ad pages that were stacked with ads, like the classified section of a newspaper. These ads offered a variety of things to kids, from weird gadgets, to services, to live animals. Now really, you could mail order a goddamn live chameleon for 25 cents. A lot of these ads would also include cutout mail order coupons, which, much to the ire of comic book collectors decades later, would require kids to eviscerate their comics. Looking back on it, this might be why older comics grew in value over the years. Cutting up all these comics would lead to fewer and fewer undamaged, intact books. There were standouts over those first few decades, the first being the Charles Atlas ads, or the insult that made a man out of Mac. Throughout the 40s and 50s, bodybuilder Charles Atlas put out a bunch of full-page ads promoting his exercise program, often using comic strips to do so. These strips would usually involve a weak-ass little wimp getting bullied, then buying Atlas's program, then coming back as a buff bro to beat the shit out of the bully. These ads were actually pretty influential, and became a staple of pop culture. In fact, Grant Morrison and Richard Case's Flex Mentallo was created in part as a parody of these ads, even going as far as incorporating the Hero of the Beach slogan into Mentallo's reality warping powers. So let's talk sea monkeys. Selling live animals had been a thing for years, and Harold von Braunhut wanted to capitalize on that by selling his own creations. Von Braunhut had experience selling gizmos in comic ad pages, so working with marine biologist Anthony D'Agostino, he created new life and no he didn't. The so-called mythical sea monkeys were actually just brine shrimp eggs being sold in nutrient packets. Von Braunhut raked in the big bucks from the sea monkeys, and funny enough, they're still being produced to this day, stuck in the back corners of dollar stores. Finally, let's talk about hostess ads. You saw this coming, I saw this coming, we all saw this coming. In the 70s, Hostess, the snack cake company, wanted to advertise their products using the hot superhero trend at the time. After all, what better way to get people to look at your ad than to disguise it as a page-long comic strip that blends right into the rest of the comic. The first Hostess ad, Batman and the Mummy, came out in 1977, and the Hostess ads continued to pop up in comics for around five years or so. In that time, everyone got a piece of the pie, or, well, cake, if you will. This opened the floodgates for other companies to do their own comic strip ads in comics, and... I have to talk about the KFC comics, don't I? Back in 2015, DC decided to cash in and release a series of KFC-branded comics. Each comic, lampooning some of DC's most notable stories, featured the Colonel fighting an evil version of himself from the multiverse, alongside DC's array of heroes. It was certainly, uh, something. The last of these comics came out in 2017, and we haven't seen another crossover from the Colonel since. Alright, let's move on. Comics didn't just advertise other products, though, they also advertised comics themselves. The house ad is a staple of comics advertising and had its start in the early 40s. They would be simple ads, listing out what else the publisher had on newsstands at the time. House ads really started evolving with the introduction of the direct market. With comics needing to fight for your attention, more effort went into really selling the book to you. This is really where comics advertising went from being a business necessity to a real art form. The ads were original pieces drawn by artists to promote new comics, like this double set drawn by Bill Sienkiewicz, advertising Power Man and Iron Fist. There was a great variety to them, often playing to either humorous or serious tones. Where house ads really started to peak were around the mid-80s to the late 90s. Publishers had found a surefire formula that worked for them. Take some original art, add a spicy tagline, slap the logo and release date on, and make sure you include who's making the book for some extra star power. You know, now that I think about it, the 90s were the peak for advertising across the board, thanks to everything being dipped in the totally rad in-your-face vibe that the 90s were known for. But another reason for it being the peak might be... Be it the crazy cool video game ads or the big milk ads, which is... A topic for another video. 
each ad popped out at you. Seeing now classic books at their infant stage being advertised as yet to be released books evokes a strong feeling in you, like you're in for a legendary ride. And that's the goal. A great house ad is one that evokes emotion and really gets the reader excited to read the book it's advertising. Imagine it's 1998, you're sitting in your room listening to Third Eye Blind and reading a copy of The Incredible Hulk when suddenly you see this ad for Earth X, promising a 14 issue odyssey by one of the driving forces behind Marvels. There's a sudden build up of excitement as you look at the gorgeous art. Three words, beginning in January. Did you get a contact high from imagining that? Cause that's fucking powerful. But with every rise, there must come a subsequent fall, and sadly, comic house ads had their downfall thanks to a little thing called the internet. With the internet doing a lot of the hype work for them, publishers didn't really see any reason to put the extra effort into producing ads. The resulting ads? Eh, yeah, just take a fucking JPEG of a cover and slap some text on it, okay, cool, boom, ship it off to print. Current house ads do nothing, they don't evoke any feeling, they're just plain regurgitation. But here's the thing. The problem lies in the fact that these ads are still trying to make their first impression with readers rather than making a proper second impression. Back in November, Marvel ran an ad for the following month's Doctor Strange Surgeon Supreme No. 1. It wasn't just a JPEG of the cover. It had some flavorful design to it that gave readers an idea of what the big element of the new run would be while keeping things vague. While not perfect, it's not there to make a first impression. Odds are, readers are relatively aware of the existence of a Doctor Strange book. But it's that second impression. Or third, or fourth, or fifth. Okay, okay, we get it, you read comics, jeez. It's that impression that matters. In the age of the information highway, I am fucking numb to generic ass ads in my comics. It may be a bit crass of me to expect this, but if I'm paying $3.99 for a comic and 8 of those 31 non-cover pages are going to ads, at least give me something that stands out. They can be the life or the death of a series depending on how many people know of that series' existence. To the publishers, bring back that magic, make me feel something again, make me want these stories. And to the readers, when was the last time an ad for a comic made you feel something? Comment below with your answers. Comics advertising is an element of comics that often gets overlooked, but when done right, can be an art form in and of itself. Where it will go from here, only time can tell.